Here you can see the 3D model for the Voron 0.1, which is a 3D printer I recently built. And as you can see, it is super detailed. Every little uh, screw is modeled in, which is very useful if you're building it and want to know exactly what goes where. But let's say I want to modify a part of this. Just going in here and starting to modify it is quite slow and there is a lot of other things going on. Also, you can see that there is no uh, modeling history down here. And while I can start the modeling history for this uh, part, it will become very sluggish because there's just way too much going on. In this video, I will show you some tips and tricks for working with big 3D models like that and how you can easily modify uh, parts uh, without having to worry about uh, everything being super sluggish. Hey guys, David here and welcome to Make a Software, the weekly series in addition to my project videos where I show you one really cool feature or software that will greatly help you in your DIY projects. So before we go ahead and modify stuff, let me just quickly show you a bit how to uh, nav navigate a model like this more easily. Now I'm sure you are aware uh, of the navigation here on the side, where you uh, can organize all of your different uh, bodies into components and then just uh, show and hide them. For example, I can uh, go ahead and hide the panels here, or I can uh, hide the banana since uh, you have now seen what the scale of this printer is. But uh, let's say I want to uh, just have this still around, uh, this top hat here, but uh, not have it in the way as much. By double clicking on any uh, part, you will select just that component that you have uh, double clicked. Uh, this is a lot easier than uh, going here through the navigation and uh, finding exactly which one it is. So let's say we double click on this uh, top hat here and then we can use the right click menu, which gives you a lot of the controls that you will get here on the side as well. For example, we can isolate it here if we want to just look at it. Uh, but that was not what we wanted to do in this case, so we can go ahead and un-isolate it again. Instead, we can change the opacity here. So let's say uh, we want it to be visible, but just barely. So let's set it to 20%, which will just still show it, but you can now see much better what is going on underneath. You can also go one step further with that, uh, and if you want to just entirely hide it, you can double click on it once again and go right click and show hide, or press the shortcut V uh, to hide it and this will hide the entire component. And as you can see, uh, well, for the most part, this uh, is very organized. Uh, all the screws here are their own uh, components within here. So uh, by just double clicking on the main component, I did not select those. So let's show this here uh, again and just hide the entire top hat. While we're at it, let's also hide some of the other things to uh, get a bit of a better look. So now we just have the main mechanical assembly left. And uh, for example, let's say that uh, for whatever reason, we don't want the Voron logo here because although they're really great guys, we just want our own logo here. Now you could go ahead and uh, start modifying here, uh, selecting these here and uh, going, uh, I don't know, extruding them uh, to this point and removing it like that. And while that is totally possible, by doing so, now it's gone, and I don't have any history like you probably used to in Fusion uh, to go back. Now I can just control Z back, but if I wanted to uh, make it deeper instead and I uh, did something else afterwards, that is no longer possible. Now what we can do is go right click on the components and say capture design history. But something that has as many components and like every little screw model as this one, capturing the design history makes it extremely slow and any change you make will just take ages to process. So what is actually a much better idea is to go ahead, you can double click on it to select that specific component. And then here you will see this little dotted line where it is uh, in the explorer. And in here, let's go right click on it and say save copy as. This will save a fusion file of just that specific component. And it automatically is named what the thing is named in here. So let's save that. And when we open the file, now we just have this individual component. If we here now go right click and say capture design history, you can see this was basically instantaneous and uh, it is not slow at all. So now we can uh, go back, select all of that, uh, do the extrude up to this face, and now it's gone. But uh, we have, as we are used to, the design history is here. So we can go back and instead, uh, we actually do want the logo, but we want it even more intense. So let's go minus one and uh, cut it even deeper. For sake of clarity, uh, let's uh, keep it removed. We're gonna save this uh, component and then when we go back to our uh, 
main thing. Now, of course, we do uh, want to also have our uh, change component in our main assembly. So we're going to activate the parent component uh, to this. Now, if it's uh, like one of the, these main components, then you can just stay in the uh, like master thing. Uh, but here, uh, this is a child component of the Z bed. So let's activate just that. And then here in our uh, file explorer, let's go right click and say insert into current design. And this will insert it into the currently active uh, component. Now you will have to uh, once again uh, move it perfectly into place. Uh, but you can make use of uh, some of uh, these other features here. Let's first rotate it uh, to the same orientation. And then we can actually use the point to point. So we're going to select a very specific point here. And then we're going to select that point where we want to go. And as you can see, it now directly moved here. And since this is still basically the same uh, thing, this was a slight change. This is a very easy way to move it into exactly the same position. Now we can go ahead and hide the other one. And here we have our uh, changed design. And if we scroll down, you can see that there is this linked icon. That means that if we do any changes in here in the other one, let's say we create a sketch here and just have this very weird little uh, dimple logo here. Save it. Then when we're in here, you can now see that there is this little uh, exclamation mark saying the component is out of date. And we can either right click on here and say uh, get latest version or up on the top, there is the same icon. And uh, this by clicking on here, you will update all of your linked components. And as you can see, this change is now pulled into here. And since this is uh, somewhat related uh, to this topic, I'm going to uh, put a little PSA here. If you know you will create a design that includes more than one singular component, then instead of when you make create your uh, new file here, just going ahead and creating a sketch right away, this will put your sketch in your master component. If you know you will have multiple bodies, multiple uh, components, or if you think there's even a slight possibility, then this is not a really uh, good idea because that will put everything in the master, which makes it really hard to uh, make changes later. Instead, let's go back a step, create a new component first. This will create a child component that say, um, give it a name. And now this is activated. And when we create a sketch here, this is now part of this uh, child component. This just makes it a lot easier uh, to do things. Uh, we can move around this uh, component relative to other things. And uh, we do not have to mess uh, with the master. Also, if you have the option activated that it color codes the components, if we uh, create a second component here, make a box here, and then we go back into the main thing, you can now see that down in the timeline, all of your operations have are color coded. And while the default choice here is very similar to each other, it still is a lot easier to see what is going on. Being really consistent about having every single like component of your uh, bigger model be actually a separate component inside of your 3D model just makes it a lot easier to deal with something like a big model like this. So I hope this video helped you out to uh, figure out how you can more easily work with big 3D models that you uh, download from somewhere and uh, make changes uh, to individual components. If you know somebody that you think might also be interested in this, make sure to go ahead and share this video and uh, stay subscribed so you don't miss any future Maker Software videos. With that said, thanks for watching and see you guys next week.